All right, I think I'm back. Just got disconnected for a second. Uh, so I got both of those saved out. Uh, let's just open them real quick in Photoshop. So we have our beauty front this time. And what we want to do then is we're going to duplicate our occlusion. And that allows it to stay in the exact same place. Because if I do a copy and paste, it might shift it up or down a little bit. So it won't line up perfectly. Uh, let's just go to beauty01. We'll call this uh, occlusion. And now we are just going to do a tiny bit of compositing. Um, let's see. Don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to keep this pretty simple. Uh, I wish I could get to depth of field, but we're not. That's pretty unimportant for something like this. Um, so we'll just set this to multiply. Uh, makes it really dark. Our character's really dark too. Oh, I think this is because. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, so I have to change my file save as setting. I need to go to uh, color managed. This is another annoying thing that Maya did. Like, I don't know if they try to make it easier or worse, but there's this whole really lengthy thing about linear lighting that I can't get into right now. Um, but it's basically just like a, I don't know if it's a flaw necessarily, but it's just a reality of doing things in 3D. There are these different color spaces. Um, and the way that you light things, actually, I'm not, I'm not gonna get into it. Needless to say, for now, just save it as color managed image, not as raw. So save it now. I'm going to resave it. Raw just kind of darkens things. We'll keep it at that for now. It has to do with the uh, gamma values. I'm also not an expert on that stuff, so you're probably better off just looking up stuff like that anyway. So now this one's a little bit washed out, unfortunately. Um, I don't know. It's not giving me anything right in the middle. But I think with the multiply... It's going to look pretty good. And then we can do a little bit of color correction to make it look even better. Uh, beauty. Yes. Cool. So let's multiply that. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Um, I'm going to put a background in here. I'm just going to try to have it fade into this one for now. So I'll just select that color and then fill. Um, ugh, that's no good. Um, well darn let's see I don't want to re-render this with an alpha channel though alright I'm going to render a mat real quick uh, we're going to lose our shadow here I think but put this in a new layer call this mat and I'm going to create a surface shader Let's do file, uh, assign new material. We want surface. And this is basically just going to give me a material that is purely white uh, and has no shadowing or anything whatsoever. Uh, I'm going to render this. Now, this should render real fast. I don't think I'll get cut off. And this just gives me basically a, a way to cut out the character from the background. So, just call this Matt. And go back to Photoshop. <clears throat> This way I can put whatever I want in the background. So this shadow's nice, but we're just gonna lose that, and that's not a big deal. I think it'll actually still be there in the occlusion, so that'll actually look kinda nice. Um, just gives us a really soft thing. Um, so first thing I wanna do is put black behind it because I'm gonna use it. So I hit D to get my default values over here. Shift F5 to fill with foreground color. Merge these together. And this time, because there's no uh, alpha around it, I can just copy and paste it. Matt, I'm going to put these in a folder so I can cut them both out. Oh, I guess I don't want to do that actually. So I'm going to use this as a uh, layer mask. So I'm going to create a layer mask real quick on this. I hit Control uh, C again, hitting Alt to select this. And now we have a little bit of a rim, which is not ideal. Um, but we're going to live with it for now. Uh, is that coming from the occlusion? No. Yeah, there's like a whole thing with how things are calculated in Maya and how you render them. you got to get rid of this. Uh, and that's through interpretation. Uh, that's another topic. Um, but for now, you know, if you have a little bit of a rim, that's not a big deal. Um, so lastly, let's just do a little bit of color correction on the uh, color layer. And since, since I'm doing the level in this folder, it's not going to affect anything below it. 
Oh yeah, and actually yeah, we have a nice. Uh, so let's actually create a background for this real quick. I'm gonna go with the kind of like light blue that's uh, similar to. Uh, let's actually just pick a color from this. I could even probably do this snowy background, but for now we'll just do a solid color. even do like a gradient if we wanted to. Sometimes I'll do a dark one behind it and start just doing opacity so I can kind of find something that I like. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. And actually I might do a level over the whole thing. For, well no, let's do it on the character first. We'll get it that exactly where we want it. Um, so we just double click on this icon. I can start dialing this in. And I want to bump contrast a little bit, so I want to crunch these in. And what I'm trying to do is basically just highlight the values that are here. So since there's almost no pixels that are above this value, I can kind of crunch those out and push their values closer to the middle here. Um, I'm just trying to get a good range. So inevitably when you do this, like it, it kind of, I don't know if it's an illusion or not, but it like kind of pumps the saturation a little bit. So sometimes you might want to go in and add a hue saturation above this and just bring that back down like just by like negative five or something. What did I type in? Yeah, like negative five. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think this is starting to look pretty solid here. Um, you know, you can have fun with it too and find like little things that you want to overlay to kind of just add uh, visual interest to this. Um, wonder what happens if I do like a layer mask that's a gradient over top of this. Um, just like my gradient tool. That's kind of nice. Um, I almost like the light to dark. Uh, let's put this in a folder, call it background, and now I can do color correction just on the background too. Um, stuff like that punch that in and really blow it out. Let's see what we get. That's too much. So nice thing too is you can kind of push this and then just turn the opacity of the, the value down of the layer. And then you can kind of just adjust the influence of what that level does. Um, that's way more than we need. Maybe something like that. Um, and let's find a texture to overlay over top of this. Um, oh yeah, other little things you can do just for visual interest. Uh, you don't want to push this too hard, but we could do like a vignette. Um, so I could just fill this with like a gray, set it to multiply, and then create another um, uh, layer mask here. And this layer mask, I want to select, I'm going to create a uh, circular marquee with a really, really high feathering. I'm going to like uh, 150. And I'm just going to go from the center. I'm holding Shift and Alt to kind of pull out from the center. Actually, I want to let go of Shift because I want to just basically do this. Um, and then I'm just going to fill this with black. It should be a really nice... Uh, yeah, so now we have a nice vignette over everything. This is just for sort of like, you know, we don't want to go too crazy with it, so we'll pull the opacity back a little bit. Um, one more thing we could do, we could do uh, Noise. These are all just sort of like little Photoshop filter things that sort of add a little bit more visual interest to the image as a whole, which makes it just a little bit nicer to look at. Um, yeah. So to do noise, I'm just going to fill it with white. Um, do filter, noise. We could try. What does dust and scratches give you? I forget. Uh, I think you need different values to get that. Okay, we'll do uh, filter, noise. Let's do uh, add noise. Just settle on that. We'll set this to overlay so we actually get some cool color stuff. And um, before I go any farther, I'm going to save this. It's PSD uh, in my Photoshop folder. Beauty, uh, beauty oh, what is this called? Um, I'll just call it Beauty Post 02. Um, it's a different render camera from the last one, but all right. So noise needs to get dropped way, way, way down to like eight or 10 or something like that. Uh, just makes it a little bit more interesting to look at. So 
you know, I think this is starting to look pretty cool. Um, maybe set this even lower, like six. Little things I'm noticing right away. Obviously, the main things of, like, I don't have all the paint and stuff on the gloves and the jacket and stuff yet. And I need to do a better job sculpting the uh, frills down here. Um, I think overall, I could still do a little bit more of an overall level to everything. Uh, bring some of that brightness back up. Because I'm losing some of that with the vignette. Um, and, you know, I think she needs eyelashes. I think that'll set this off. Obviously, the skin is a little too pale right now. Um, but I think this is starting to come together. Like, this doesn't look half bad. Um, what else? There's one other thing I wanted to do. Um, my noise. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it's nice uh, to do, like, a texture overlay, too. Um, so one of the textures that I gave you guys was, like, an old film grain thing. Um, let me see where I stored that. Uh, it's under stock textures. Okay, so... Uh, and you can actually use the same layer mask as your vignette to kind of just... It's just another thing to sort of make things look a little more interesting. Sometimes metal looks nice, too. Uh, a brush metal like might look neat on her, because I could do, like, diagonal uh, thing that kind of almost looks like... Um, I could do diagonal blur that kind of makes it look snowy. Uh, so let's try to do that, actually. I'm trying to find... Sorry, I'm just going through looking for my textures right now. I need to... Okay, it's just really far down. Um... Okay, so I'm looking for like a metal, maybe scratch. What do I have there? Nah. Um, this film texture is a neat one. I'll bring that in. And then let's also try um, my metals. I'm blind right now. Um, I think I like this one. I'm going to do a blur on this. So I'm just going to, again, probably want to rotate this. So let's just bring it in, um, paste it, transform, and rotate it 90 degrees. Um, metal overlay. And i got to scale it way down. Again, these are just, you know, ways to kind of sell your model a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to filter, uh, blur, I'm going to do a directional blur. Why am I blind right now? Did they move it? Mo motion blur, that's right, it's called motion blur in this. I'm going to go kind of high with this. Let's see what I get from like, I almost like that. That's a ton. So I'm going to duplicate this and try that again. So I have the other version still handy. Uh, directional, directional, or motion. Man, already I forgot. Okay. So let's see what I get from an overlay of this. It's kind of weird looking. Um, but I can take this and just sort of vary the way that it's visible. Uh, I'm gonna level out my mask so it's not all black like that. Um, okay, I'm gonna leave my gamma alone and just kinda get rid of some of the darks here. So it's more of just a gray. Actually kinda crunch it because I want the edges to go out a little bit too. Maybe not quite so much. All right, so there you go. Just a little hint of it, it's not much. Um, and then finally I'll do this nice film, vintage film thing. This is just like, a, I like to put this on sometimes. It's kind of cool looking. Um, again, this is all totally optional stuff, but this is a really nice high res image that I gave to you guys um, that you can use to kind of do these things. But remember, subtlety is really the key here. You don't want anything with too heavy of a hand. Um, this actually has some nice radial kind of stuff going already. So let's see if we can multiply those. That might be interesting. Um, all right, I don't like multiply. I'm going to go back to overlay. Um, now let's go through them. Color dodge gives me some nice results. Yeah, overlay is pretty solid. I think soft light's a little better. It's almost the same as overlay, but it uh, it's just not quite as heavy. Let's make it more like uh, 20, maybe. 
And then kind of move it around too and see what I get, you know. Um, I think that's kind of cool. So let's keep it with that. Um, put this level over top of everything. And that's about it. Uh, I think I'm going to cut it here. Um, but yeah, hopefully this gives you kind of an idea of, you know, different ways that you can sort of beautify your image and how you can do a nice beauty render. Uh, I can do just a little bit of post-processing in Photoshop to make things just a little bit more visually interesting than just plain, uh, a plain 3D render. Um, and like, this is essentially, you know, why, you know, I remember when I graduated and started modeling things, I, you know, I had some decent models, but I just could not get them to look as good as stuff that I saw on CG Society and other things. And it's, it's because I didn't really realize that people were doing a lot of post-processing, you know, it's, it's not really cheating. It's just, you're, this is all part of the process of making, uh, an attractive image. I mean, you look at TV or movies, they're doing this stuff to everything. I mean, that's what compositing is, um, you know. Everything here is stuff that we made, so it's pretty legitimate to do all this stuff. Uh, there's always going to be a little bit of, you know, fine-tuning of colors and values at the end with levels, adding little bits of noise, vignettes, types of things that sort of just make the character... The bottom line is you want to make the character look as good as you can possibly do it, and kind of whatever it takes to get it to that point, uh, go for it. Um, so I hope this has been useful. Um, if there's interest in Marmoset... Um, let's see, 305. All right. Anyone who is not interested in Marmoset, you know, just cut it here. I'm going to get into Marmoset just for a few minutes and show how I set up that last scene. And uh, that'll be about it. Um, but yeah, so hopefully this was useful. I hope this gives you guys a better idea of how to render out your models. You know, if not for the characters, you know how this is a reference for rendering other things out in the future. Um, and yeah. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, um, switching to Marmoset, which crashed recently, so here we go. This is actually fine, so I'll start from a new scene. Uh, I'm going to open to show you what we're going for. I might not get here right away, but this is essentially what we're going to go for. Um, this is still sort of a three-point lighting setup with the HDR render. Um, I have subsurface for her skin. Um, I have three materials here, but that's just because I wanted the eyes to be a little bit different from the hair and from the skin. And then I have one for body, and then the default is just, you can ignore that. Um, so let's start, uh, let me just double check which one I'm using. Okay. So, first thing you want to do is get your model in here. So I've already split mine into two pieces. Um, by material, so I have my body and my head. I'm going to just import both of them. You can see it has every other little piece too, so that's useful in case I wanted to uh, to apply materials individually. I can do that. Um, grouping these together, same way as in Maya, just control G. And I'm doing that so I can rotate her 180 degrees, so she's facing us. Um, so I'm going to start off, as always, just with labeling. So clothing is first. I'm going to call this one skin. I'm going to call this one hair. I'm going to call this one um, eyes. So let's just start by applying these to the pieces that they're supposed to be applied to. So clothing, I'm going to just go to body because I know clothing covers all that eyes dragging it onto the eyes themselves and if you want you know I can change the, uh, the color so I know that it's the right thing skin will make a different color um, so skin is only gonna be on this and then hair is actually gonna be on the scarf too so let's just make this a different color for now make sure that we've got it applied to everything okay so that's done um, so now we just have to get our textures in here. So let's start with clothing, because we only have one for clothing. So it's really this simple. Um, the only difference now is we have a gloss map, um, and we have uh, diffuse is now called albedo. Uh, this is just a PBR thing, uh, physically based rendering. You generally diffuse is now called albedo. So let's bring that one in first. Um, these are old textures, so I'm going to go to Maya to make sure I have the newest ones. Just find those. So clothing, so you can see, that brings it on. It's looking right. Um, 
but we're super shiny and super uh, boring with our spec. So let's bring in, let's do the normal map first. Um, so now we have a little bit of that. We have our folds and stuff. And then for this one, you saw before I had split out gloss separately from uh, spec. So, so my gloss to gloss. So again, gloss tends to be lighter. Um, and I can still play with the global values here. Um, but basically this global value is just, you can turn it all the way off and flatten everything, but it's basically what it's doing is changing the, um, the tightness of the highlight. So the closer to the right, the tighter it's gonna be. So let's bring our spec map in. And that brings everything back down again. Uh, so I want to diffuse this a little bit and probably drop the intensity here. So there's also this thing called, it's either Fresno or Fresnel. I'm not actually sure. I'll look it up because keep, this keeps coming up. Pronunciation of, of this word. How to pronounce. It is for now. All right. Cool. Sounds kind of goofy, but it is pronounced for now. Now I know. Um, so I think that's already looking pretty good. Um, don't have to do too much more than that. And like this is the beauty of PBR. Like you have the HDR that's lighting this, and you'll see uh, I can change the sky map. Right now I have it on this uh, cathedral thing. And you can load your own HDRs, but Marmoset comes with a couple too. But you can see, like, just the lighting can change the look of things so much. Um, and this is what makes HDR lighting so interesting. Uh, so we can go real light with this. Um, usually the church I don't like, but it's, it kind of works for this character for some reason. We'll leave it on that for now. Um, all right, let's do the eyes next. So unfortunately there's no node editor like in Maya, so I can't just open one texture and drag it into all three of them, but eh, whatever, we'll live. So we'll go to the normal map first. Um, I don't think there's really any normals on the eyes, but we'll just load it anyway, in case we do anything later, it's already plugged in. Um, that is the one nice thing, is every time that I save these out again, it just updates in Marmoset. I don't have to really worry about redoing that. So Albedo is now this. Uh, we do want to make sure that we set our default color though, this will sort of create an override that adds like a red shift to everything, which we don't want. It's not the same kind of red shift as in uh, speed of light and sound. Sorry, dad jokes have to come out sometimes, though I'm not yet a father. Um, and spec map is last. Um, so for this one, I'm gonna be, because I haven't really defined much of that yet. I'm just kind of going to kind of be using these default values to get in like a nice spec and gloss. Um, so let's do the hair, albedo, make sure we set this back to white. Um, I'm going to open my other one real quick. I'm going to save this as, I just want to reference this so I'm not wasting too much time. Um, Snow girl demo. And let's see, open version two. Um, yeah, so all I have is normal map and albedo in these because I haven't done the other ones yet. Uh, okay. So normal map. Um, Marmus, uh, oh, I gotta go back to Maya for that. Source images. Head in here. And I think that's it. Uh, so I'm going to have to work around with my uh, settings. Gloss is too high right now. I just want a little bit of gloss. Oh, yeah. And for now, I forgot to actually tell you what it is. So basically what it is is sort of a fall off around the edges. It's really nice to have. It just kind of sets things apart. It's almost like an, a free rim light that you get. Um, you can see if I turn it down. Uh, what are we looking at right now? The hair. You can see how like the edges kind of get lighter. It's just a nice effect. It's just particularly useful on cloth because cloth actually does that a lot of the times. Like as you look, as cloth kind of starts to bend away from you, you're starting to see more and more of those fibers kind of layered over top of each other that come off of cloth. So it basically appears to make the edge of clothing lighter. Um, it's not on every kind of clothing, but you know, like on looser kind of worn clothing, you might see that. Um, it just looks nice too. 
Um, so let's set up the skin. Albedo. And also, I'm going to change this to um, my diffusion method I want to set to skin. It's going to give me the ability to do subsurface scattering. Um, set my normal map here. And it's very shiny. So let's bring the gloss way down. A little bit higher. Skin should be a little, you know, there's, especially on the face, there's oils and stuff on the face that make the skin a little bit lighter. Um, and now we just want to bring a little bit of red into the face to kind of give it that subsurfacey look. Um, we're already seeing it's looking a little bit waxy, um, but it's not quite light enough. Um, let me just make sure too that I am with all these. You want to make sure that sRGB color space is checked for your color. Uh, I don't think it matters for the normal map as much. Let's see. That really changes things a lot. Um, leave that off for now hmm. I need to look into that um, okay so let's see we have our subderma scatter our normal smoothing shadow blur there's a lot of stuff in here um, I think what we want to do is turn our translucency up yeah so this is just sort of like putting a little bit of blood into that flesh um, right now her face is just super pale uh, and there's nothing going on but we want to add just a little bit of red into that not too much because then she's gonna look like she's glowing um, we'll keep this maybe like right around 0 0.08 maybe. Um, the sub subdermis is going to be similar, but I think it's not quite the same depth. Uh, let me see what happens if I bring this towards the orange. Yeah, so that seems to be more like a facing ratio thing. Um, I don't know, I'm just going to kind of... There's some trial and error involved in this. Uh, that's all there is to it. The specular... Bring this down again. Just a little bit more. Um... Just mess with these values till you get something that you like. Uh, fuzz kind of does the same thing as Fresnel, I think, but more overall. Uh, that's kind of nice, actually. Kind of like 0.5 maybe for that. Let's get a little tighter on here. I'll darken this red a little. Maybe up to like 0.12. Um, so yeah, it's pretty good. Um, so now, only thing I want to do is add a couple lights. Uh, pretty simple. Just do a view, I think, or no, edit. What is it? Scene. All right, scene, new light. Uh, we'll call this one. Well, I'm not even going to bother naming these. Um, you see right away that brings the specular up a lot because that's we have a much more focused light now. Um, I'm going to go to directional. This is going to be my... Uh, Uh, key light. I'm not doing a fill. I'm basically treating the sky map as my fill. Um, so basically what this means is, alright, I need to obviously bring down the gloss value on everything quite a bit. Okay, and I think the way that this translucency works is like lights actually activate it. Um, so we need a really bright light going into something. It pulls more red out of the surface. Still seems kind of high. It's kind of like 0.15. All right, eyes. Those can stay pretty glossy. That's fine. Uh, hair. Tighten that a little. Okay. And then the clothing definitely needs to come down quite a bit. Okay. So this. The skin's looking way too soft now for me. Subdermis, but turn the translucency out maybe. Let's get this closer to like a value that I really would want it to look like, like the actual overall skin. I can just kind of turn it way up. Just kind of thinking a little bit here. Um, all right, that's fine. 
Uh, I do think I want to drop the intensity of this light just a little bit to like 1, 1 1.2 maybe. Um, let's create another light, uh, scene, new light. Uh, this one, for this too, I'm just using directional lights. Part of that is if I ever want to put this up on the Marmoset viewer, the Marmoset viewer currently does not support, uh, I think, Omni or Spot. It might support Spot, it doesn't support Omni. Uh, so this is going to be my rim. Um, since they're directional lights, they can really be anywhere. I just kind of keep them in different places so I remember which one is which. Um, so rim, obviously we want to blow this one up a little bit. We get something that we like. Um, not sure why I'm not seeing it right now. Okay, there we go. I just had to go a little bit further. I kind of like this on the other side. Let's do that. I'm just going to set it to like 8 though. 77 is like super high. Um, just this highlight. Maybe down a little bit. Uh, so the last thing I want to do, uh, well not last, I keep saying last, but another thing I want to do is change, I'm keeping this as sky, but I'm going to change the backdrop brightness. It doesn't change how it lights it, it just it turns it to black, so it kind of takes away that distraction. Um, let's mess with the brightness on this a little bit. I think that's pretty good. Um, so it's getting pretty close to where it was before. Uh, there's a few little tweaks I can make to make it prettier. Uh, and these are sort of things, so Marmoset actually has some of the type of filters that you would have in Photoshop built right into it. Um, so I can do a couple things. I can turn on, I generally would turn on all these um, when I'm trying to do a beauty render. They'll slow down the overall interaction a little bit, so you might want to not want to turn these on until you're done. Uh, ambient occlusion. So this actually bakes ambient occlusion right in, and we do this live. So you can see if I turn this up, we get some nice lights throughout there. Um, I like that. Um, so basically, the strength will just darken it, and then size is kind of like the spread that we had in Maya. Um, yeah, so that's starting to look pretty good. Uh, I'm hitting save on that. So now, as for the filters, you're going to access them through the camera. So if you select your camera, you can do couple things you can change your depth of field um, which basically you know you start dialing in um, try to find your over overall focus distance um, so she's kind of a tough one but you can see like her back arm is like a little bit more blurry uh, I'm not going to use depth of field for this one um, but it's there for you if you want to try it maybe for like a tighter face shot um, so there's post effects. There's all these presets you can do. Um, <clears throat> I feel like most of them are total overkill. Um, but, you know, I think it's sometimes nice to go through all of them because it can kind of maybe spark an idea of like, oh, I hadn't thought of looking at it that way. Maybe I'll try to go for like a noir look or, you know, really bump my contrast. Like that looks kind of neat. Um, or I'm going to do like a glamour shot and really turn the bloom way up now she's a pretty high contrast saturated character so that looks absolutely absurd but uh you know you can try some of these out and then kind of pull it back but basically all that they're doing is adding things so there's tone mapping where you can basically change the overall exposure contrast and like colors and stuff of the image there is sharpen which will give you photoshop filter of sharpen essentially um sometimes that can kind of add a nice element if you just go up a little bit Bloom basically makes your character glow a little. It takes all the values. It, it essentially what it's doing is duplicating the character, overlaying it over everything, and blurring the heck out of it. Um, so if you have a radiant uh, god being that's coming down. Um, but a little bit can look nice. Um, vignette, you know, we talked about vignette in Photoshop. Um, just kind of frames your character a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to go back to my defaults. Uh, apparently I'm going to deselect things by accident. I'm going to set it back to default. And I'm just going to do a couple little things to it. Um, let's turn the vignette up a little bit. Which you're not even going to see because it's a black background right now. Um, so maybe I'll set my background in the sky. You can actually set the background just to solid color. So now, you already see there's a little bit of a... It's starting to slow down just because I've got everything cranked up kind of high. Um, we go up with the bloom just a little. I don't have my exposure set so high on this one, so it's not, it takes a little while before you really notice it. 
Um, okay. Um, do a little bit of a film grain like we did before. So you can turn it all the way up and it looks, it's basically doing exactly what Photoshop does. Um, but it does it right in here, which is nice. Uh, vignette, go, go up a little bit. As you can see on the sides, they really darken quite a bit. The only thing is you don't have as much control as Photoshop. You can Photoshop, you can actually draw exactly the line that you want. And this is just like procedural from the sides. Uh, and then you can kind of smooth that out a little bit. Uh, I think her contrast could come up a little now. Just an overall contrast. Uh, maybe the saturation could go down a tiny. No, I like it actually at one. Just keep it at one. But there we go. Um, so now we pretty much have the same thing. Uh, I can't really do the render layers in this, um, but that's okay. I don't need to because I have a lot of the filters already here. So I'm just going to do, you can do capture image, capture image and open it, which is what I'll do. And this basically takes a screen cap of it and opens it for you. Um, yeah, so now I can just open this. If I really want to do any more post-processing, I could open this up in Photoshop and we can compare. Um, so I actually like my Marmoset a little bit better. Uh, I think it looks, because of the subsurface, I think that really makes it look a lot nicer. Um, but yeah, here we go. So basically the same model, two different renderers, one doing it in real time, although considering this quality of it is basically at like two or three frames per second. But compared to Maya, where each of these frames took maybe uh, maybe uh, 20 seconds or so, uh, it's a pretty good result. Um, so there you have it. Uh, let's put these next to each other. Take a look. So this one just has a little extra post-processing post on it too, you gotta consider. But um, yeah, so that is Beauty Renders. Uh, I'm looking forward to finishing this character, hopefully soon. Uh, a few more things I gotta fix in ZBrush, then I can actually do some really serious final textures on her. Um, but I hope that was useful. Uh, I know I went a good bit over. Uh, I hope it was worth it. Um, I will take a look. I might cut this up. Probably not though, because it's a lot more work. Um, but yeah, all right, guys, uh, have a great spring break, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with on Sunday, and really excited to see some beauty renders uh, a week from tomorrow. All right.